when I was uh, researching this uh, presentation, uh, I was really interested in like uh, Dungeons and Dragons and role playing games in the media. And there wasn't really a lot of it to 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 find. Um, you find stuff from American TV that really goes in hard on that kind of satanic stuff. Um, and, you know, the nervousness and the fear around about it. But increasingly, parents and psychiatrists are warning that the game is taking some children too far into the realm of dark and violent fantasy. They wonder whether for some children, Dungeons and Dragons becomes more than just a game. It is not like Monopoly. There is no board. It is role playing, which is typically used for behavior modification. You know, the fact that people, they were talking to role players, but they still weren't quite getting what it was. I mean, props to whoever put this report together and intercut scenes from Excalibur in there to describe elements of the game. I mean, that's pretty cool. Slamming. It looks like a few boys around a table, but in their minds, they're fantastical characters in another world, a darker world. Ole is a cavalier. Erwin is a paladin. Dennis is a ranger. Mikey is an illusionist. And Bill is a magic user. Nicholas is a fighter, and his little brother Matthew is a thief. And though in in those American in American shows you do get occasionally get this horrified sensationalist tone, but the British ones they see it with far more scepticism. Even though they describe it as you know cross between a hobby and a cult, it's much more benevolent. Now D and D stands for Dungeons and Dragons, a fantasy game that's something of a cross between a hobby and a cult. He comes back. I'm afraid, Jeff, I'm going to attack you. <laughs> it gives children and grown-ups the chance to get away from it all, playing at being knights in shining armour, enchantresses, wizards, or medieval monks. They always struggle. They call it the Sword and Sorcery Cult, and they say, you can actually die in this game, but it's, you know, the stuff they show, it's so low-key. 19. He's hit it, he's hit it. That one slumps to the ground. And it's still your initiative, so... Yeah. Um, my cleric will come forward with his holy symbol in his hand and command them in the name of all that's good and just to return and repent their evil ways. Okay, roll two six hundred dice. Twelve. Yeah, they all fall back. Uh, it's worlds worlds away from critical role and, and you know this kind of more uh, kind of charming side you, you see now. Um, they always slip into showing tre Treasure Trap, actually. Tre treasure Trap was uh, an early live-action role-playing uh, project. Um, and, you know, I think these shows, they always realise that, well, these beardy guys sat around the table is not very exciting to watch, so let's go to a castle and watch people hit each other with foam swords. Armed combat is one way to protect yourself from attacking monsters. So, like all the other players, we grab the chance for a spot of sword play. Red dye is used in the battles to mark wounds from attackers' weapons, and too many hits means that the referee can declare you dead and make you drop out of the game. I thought I was... Time free! A wizard appeared and we all had to stand absolutely still. Oh, Peter Adventurers! I release you! Oh, thank you very much. There's a, a show called um, South of Watford where Ben Elton, a post-nosing around Ben Elton... <laughs> Uh, is playing D and D with Ian Livingston and Steve Jackson from Games Workshop, and and this is Dungeons and Dragons. In it, you join a group of adventurers exploring a monster-filled dungeon. It's the world's number one fantasy game, and they're going to sell forty thousand this year in the UK alone. So, with Ian's mates playing the other adventurers, the game commenced. Got our own abilities, yeah. Mine's using you know brute force. And... He's also reading C City of Thieves, I think, the fighty fantasy book. Of course, if you get bored with waiting for your mates to come and rescue you, you can always play on your own with one of these solo role-playing books. Uh, the pirate draws his cutlass and advances towards you. Turn to page 25 if you want to fight, or page 16 if you want to run away. I think I'll turn to page 16. And you can't get any more aces than that. I think Ben's a bit bemused. I think Ben comes from that world, uh, but, uh, you know, fair play to him. Um... Like two shows that exerted some of these, some of these, um, you know, uh, archive footage were, I love nineteen eighty four, 
from the BBC, which was shown in about 2000, 2001, that kind of time. And there was a show on Channel 4 called The 100 Greatest Toys. Um, they show some of the same clips, actually. Um, and there's, you know, there's always a mocking tone to it. It's like, oh, look at these stupid nerds. Look at these idiots playing this stupid wizard game. Um, I wonder if they were to do those sorts of shows now, they would adopt the same tone? Probably. I mean, the British are like laughing at people. <laughs> where like American uh, news reports would be terrified that Satan, Satanus, would uh, be walking through your living room door if you were playing AD&D. You know, a British you know, TV uh, presenter is probably going to call you an idiot, um, which is fair enough. I think we'd rather not be afraid of something if we can instead laugh at it. Can't you join any universe in the middle? To adventure. To a life of dignity. To riches and gold. <laughs> With him at their head, their legions will march across the land, the ranks swelling with the corpses they began. Then they will be unstoppable. That sounds bad. We have to kill them. Okay, I'm not the best at making up names. Oh, hey, I'm Mar. Boy, you weren't kidding. Hello, Mar. My name is Bing Bong the Archer. I'm an archer and such. I'm. Hector the Well Endowed? I bet. I didn't know you just grabbed one at random. I made that one with Troy in mind. One is able to control him. His power and his evil are too great. Give us the girl or we'll take her. Enough talk. na boca do dragão, nessa caverna do dragão, famoso desenho animado, e aí se transformam em personagens heróis de um desenho que nunca tem fim, porque eles não conseguem nunca mais encontrar o portal de saída e ficam lá vivendo ameaçados por esse personagem, o Vingador. Olha o mestre dos magos aí, também personagem do desenho. Diamante, você lembra lá, a terceira ala que era Diamante, um dragão. 